Disclaimer. This YouTube channel does not claim ownership to any reference materials compiled, used and uploaded. The lecture notes and questionnaires researched from various resources and test bank foundations are not in any way or any form influenced by PRC. The intent of the video is to support future licensed professionals who choose to review online, in their journey towards their respective board examinations. Okay, so for today, we will have we will tackle curriculum development. So uh, we will divide curriculum development maybe uh, two to three parts. So let's have first the introductory portion for the nature, the definition, the types of curriculum. Then later on, yung iba naman. Okay. So, when we speak <clears throat> of curriculum, uh, you always hear about K-12 curriculum. Uh, when you inquire for schools, you, will, you, you always ask, what is the curriculum? Or, especially in, in here, abroad, when you see students, you usually ask them, which school are you attending? What is the curriculum? So here, internationally, we have British curriculum, Philippine curriculum, of course, for Philippine schools, BS, C, CBSE for Indians, Indian curriculum. Meron ding IB, yung International Baccalaureate. What else? American curriculum. And of course, our lo the local curriculum here, we, they have uh, uh, UAE or the Ministry of Education curriculum. But some of them, or most of them, ang nag, uh, ano naman is either mga British or Australian Council. So they have public uh, sector, private education for, for the international schools, yung mga expatriates, kagaya ng Philippine schools. And then, <coughs> we have yung new yung pangatlong curriculum I mean uh, types of education na nag-start sa Abu Dhabi and that is a charter school yung ano ngayon na charter school kung saan nag-a-attend ay nag-a-apply yung mga Filipino teachers charter school is a combination of private and public education curriculum pero 100% uh, of their students are locals mga local, mga Arabo. Kaya gustong gusto nila mga teacher, uh, Filipino teachers kasi they are very patient. What else? Maalaga sa mga estudyante. Aside from the fact, the fact na ano sila, uh, they are excellent. They are uh, brilliant teachers or we are brilliant teachers. Kasi ang bachelor's degree natin sa education is uh, usually four years. And some of them may mga master's degree pa, as compared to other nationalities. Some, uh, let's say for example, yung mga iba, ano lang sila, certificate in teaching, uh, what else, yung mga qualifications, teaching qualifications, yun lang. E tayo kasi talagang bachelor's degree. Okay? Pero yung charter school, regulated din naman yun ng international standard. Like for example, dito sa Sharjah, we have uh, Sharjah Private Education Authority. We have SPEA. Na parang ano, parang DepEd. Nag-regulate sa education sector. Sa Dubai, meron silang KHDA. Yung du Knowledge uh, KH, Human Development Authority. And sa Abu Dhabi, they have ADEC. But of course, meron pa rin silang Ministry of Education na yun ang counterpart ng DepEd sa dito. And then, they have also Ministry of Higher Education and Research. Doon nagpapa-equivalency ng mga bachelor's degree, master's degree, PhD. That is uh, parang ano sa Philippines, parang CHED or PRC. 
and yung mga uh, education authorities. Uh, what else? Mga education department, education bodies dito sa UAE. So, what then is a curriculum? What is its purpose? What is, is its uh, nature? So, when we speak about curriculum, traditionally, the definition of curriculum is a body of subjects or subject matter prepaid by the teachers for the students to learn. So, that's at the, at the, the traditional concept of uh, curriculum, especially in the early years of the 20th century, uh, synonymous to syllabus or course of study, yung mga course outline ng mga teachers. Uh, syllabus yung before the start of the school year, meron silang ginagawang ano, calendar from, for example, from September, ito yung mga pag-aaralan na lesson. September, October, hanggang matapos ang taon. So, nandun lahat. Nandun yung, yung lesson, ilang oras niya isuturo, ilang araw, ano yung mga strategy na gagamitin niya. That's, that's an example of a syllabus. Pero ngayon, sa K-12, meron tayong binibigay na teacher's guide, curriculum guide. Na guide ng teacher kung anong competency ang kailangan niyang i-accomplish every day, every subject, every topic or every activity na nakapaloob doon sa, sa, sa syllabus or uh, curriculum guide. So, uh, that, that is a traditional definition of a curriculum. Aside from that, curriculum are written documents for a plan of action in accomplishing goals. Yun, para, yung sinasabi ko na syllabus. Parang lesson plan, pero ang lesson plan kasi is in short term, intended for a day, intended for one period. Pero kung isang taon yun na gagamitin, written curriculum, I mean written documents, that is what we call as a curriculum. In, in our educational system, uh, curriculum is also divided into uh, let's say chunks of knowledge we call uh, them like subject areas so yung mga sa basic education english math science social studies and others all these subject areas are also called curriculum syempre sa college naman yung different disciplines like humanities sciences languages department engineering department those are also called curriculum so, various disciplines. Okay? So, iba-iba ang definitions ng curriculum. What else? Curriculum is also defined as the total learning experiences of the individual. So, when we speak of individual, these are the learners. So, especially pag mga progressivist. Diba? Ang mga progressivist, uh, they want individuality. They want uh, syllabus, the subjects. So, yun, ang, ang philosophy, progressivism siya. Kung yun ang gusto nila na i-apply sa kanilang school. Kung baga, mayroon silang piling-pili that is intended for their respective students. Kasi sabi nila, uh, this can only be called curriculum if the written materials are actualized by the learner. Kasi kung, kung hanggang written material lang na hindi naman ginagawa, hindi naman na ituturo, according to them, hindi siya curriculum. So, broadly speaking, curriculum is defined as the total learning experiences of the individual. So that is from, from the progressivist point of view. Kasi traditionally, yun lang yung mga listahan ng mga subjects. Pero dapat daw i-actuate. Kailangan maituro. So, yun yung totality ng experiences ng mga learners. What else? Curriculum refers to all the experiences in the classroom which are planned and enacted by the teacher. 
and also learned by the students. So, mag meron na siyang teaching learning process. So, in short, it they are also uh, a sequence, what else? A uh, plan of study for potential experiences that are being set up in the schools. So, lahat ng mga nangyayari sa school na guide natin as teachers, bakit tayo pumapasok, paano tayo nagtuturo, that is with the use of a certain curriculum. Okay? So, iba't ibang country, kanya-kanya ng curriculum. Kaya nga, uh, noong lagi nagtatap ang, ang Finland, ang Singapore, Japan, maganyan ng mga international assessment. Ini-study ng mga educators ang kanilang curriculum. Kasi baka pwedeng i-apply sa sa respective countries nila. Even us, we 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 made a research on the curriculum of Finland. Bakit kaya ganun? Bakit silang gagaling? Bakit lagi silang nagtatap sa mga international assessments? Like for example sa sa Japan sila doon from grades 1 to 4 wala silang quizzes wala silang exams and some schools they have uh meron silang tawag uh, sleeping time during the break kaya nakikita niyo sa Facebook may mga picture silang sa desk nila pwedeng i-convert into bed sleeping bed para kasi binibigyan sila ng time na matulog para magpahinga during lunch break and then, gigisingin sa loo ulit, tapos mag-aaral. Tapos, ang exams nila doon ay purely skills. Practical test. Practicum. Ganon. Same is true in, in Finland. So, studying their curriculum will help educators or curriculum implementers. Pero that will depend on the kind, the nature of learners that we have. Kasi yung iba doon, high-tech, masyado yung schools nila. Kaya ang gagaling ng mga bata. Especially pag Japan, di ba? Technology-wise, nangunguna sila. Which is hindi naman applicable sa atin. Minsan, di ba? Kung pag-uusapan lang ay advancement of technology. We have pilot schools na may mga smart technology. Pero... Not all, especially sa public schools. Wala pang hayatang may mga smart boards sa mga public schools eh. Diba? So, all the experiences, the totality of learning experiences of the individual is what we call as curriculum. Okay, so basically, curriculum as a cumulative tradition of organized knowledge that we are following. What else? It is an experience, not only the students, but for the teachers also. Instructional plan, just like our lesson plan, our curriculum guide, a syllabus, competency map. Kasi, uh, ang modern uh, na tawag na ngayon sa lesson plan ay competency map. Kasi, we are uh, looking forward for the outcomes, yung mga competencies na matututunan ng bata after every lesson. Hindi lang yung nagturo ka, wala namang natutunan. Hindi mo siya na-upgrade. Hindi mo siya na-deliver ng maayos. So, kailangan may competency na matutunan. This is the outcome space. And then, curriculum as an instructional outcome. Ito nga, yung sabi ko na outcomes. May output. Kasi for every process, there, there should always be an output. May results dapat. May outcome dapat. Kaya ang curriculum mo dapat, ang lesson plan mo, maayos, kompleto. From presentation, motivation, uh, then, I mean motivation, that's preparation, then nag-present ka ng lesson. After presenting, kailangan kang mag-evaluate din. Magpa-quiz ka, magpa-summarize ka, synthesis, evaluation, and then, magpigay ka ng follow-up. 
magbigay ka ng assignment if necessary para ma-follow up yon. And, kailangan lagi nagbabalue integration para ma-connect mo yung lesson mo sa real life application. So that they will demonstrate or they can manifest appreciation about your lesson. So yun yung complete package of a plan. Instructional plan. A competency map. And that is a curriculum. Okay? Now, what are the different types of curriculum operating in schools? <clears throat> Kasi hindi lang naman yun eh, yung, yung, yung mga written na yun. One is recommended curriculum. So, most of the school curricula are recommended. Siyempre, hindi na naman tayo basta-basta gumagamit ng curriculum. Pinag-aralan yan ng mga curriculum developer, curriculum designer, uh, proposed by scholars, yun nga, mga curriculum developers, and professional organizations. Like for example, DepEd, CHED, uh, what else? Yung mga professional teachers organization like yung Philippine Association of for Teacher Education. Kasi regularly na nagre-research yung mga yan. Research and innovations. What else? Yung Biology Teacher Association. Then pag may nakita sila, may discover silang makbago na applicable sa generation na to, then they can recommend. So, we call them recommended curriculum. Okay, so curriculum pa din ang ta- I mean that's that's is still a part of the curriculum. Okay? Pag recommended curriculum that is being proposed by scholars, professional organizations as I mean just to implement in a school or in an educational system. Next is written curriculum. So, from the word written, so this includes documents, ito na yun, yung mga sinasabi sa definition. Course of study, syllabi or syllabus, hounded down to schools, district, divisions, department, or colleges for implementation. Kaya nung nabuo ang, ang doon, enhanced basic education curriculum, yun yung K-12. Siyempre, nag-pilot testing muna sila sa mga yung mga pioneering schools. Hindi muna sila hindi muna nila inintroduce sa lahat. Nag-pilot muna sila like selected. And then they tried out in sample schools or population to see if the curriculum will be effective or not. Then nung nakitang effective yun inapply sa atin. Kaya nagkaroon tayo ng Enhanced Basic Education Curriculum that is the K-12 program. Ganun naman eh, nag, nag ano siya kasi meron din naman tayong curriculum uh, process. Kung kailangan bang palitan na, kailangan, kailangan muna nilang i-evaluate, i-monitor bago nila ma, bago sila mag-introduce ng bagong curriculum. Another example of written curriculum is yung lesson plan. Yun. Yung ginagamit ng teacher araw-araw, that's a plan, that's a written curriculum. Okay? The third one is the thought curriculum. So, meron na tayong written. Siyempre, yung written curriculum na yun is you need to put that in action. So, the different planned activities which are put into action in the classroom compose the thought curriculum. So, siyempre, meron kang written curriculum, meron ka ng plan, eh, kailangan mo din dapat ng learners. Okay? So, yung mga learners, sila ang gagamit ng written curriculum guided by the teacher. So, kung walang teacher, wala ding thought curriculum. Kaya nga, teaching learning process. So, thought curriculum varies according to the learning styles of students and the teaching styles of teacher. 
kaya meron tayong sinasabi na tawag doon um, uh, principles of I mean strategies principles and strategies of teaching for you to check kung applicable ba ito sa klase mo baka naman minsan may na-discover kang magandang strategy todo effort kang gumawa nag-aral confident kang inintroduce sa klase pero hindi pala applicable sa mga estudyante mo di ba so ang sabi ng mga teachers they are using hundreds of strategies every day pa iba iba para lang ba kasi you need to discover every day parang hinuhuli mo din yung tawag doon hinuhuli mo yung kiliti ng mga estudyante mo kung saan sila mas natututo mas natututo ba sila sa games gamification simulation or sa lecture ba sila what else activities ba sa role playing mga ganun okay so thought curriculum Next is the fourth one, supported curriculum. So, syempre, in order to have a successful teaching, so meron ka ng written, meron ka ng teacher na magtuturo. In order to have a successful teaching, uh, other than the teacher and the plan, there must also be materials. These materials which uh, should support or help in the implementation of a written curriculum. Like, yung mga resources mo, hindi ka naman pwedeng pumasok basta-basta sa classroom na wala kang wala kang pari, ang tawag doon, wala kang na hindi ka handa. Wala kang sandata. Unless, ikaw siguro yung teacher na expert na expert na, let's say, 30 years ka na nagtuturo, memorize mo na yung laman ng libro. <laughs> Kung merong ganun eh, halimbawa, ako din, minsan, ah, uh, Nagtuturo ako ng physics kasi for for almost 20 years na. So, kahit pumasok ako na, na whiteboard marker lang yung hawak ko, at saka calculator, gamay na gamay muna kasi yun ang tinuturo mo araw-araw. Diba? Kaya mas mainam din na mag- maging flexible ang mga teachers. Hindi lang yung major mo ang ituturo mo. You need to, to be flexible din. Kaya, yung supported curriculum para ma- maging anong mga bata maging interested sila diba? kailangan mo din ng audiovisual materials kung kailangan mo ng projector especially kung magtuturo ka ng literature hindi lang yung ikukwento mo yung Romeo and Juliet kailangan mapanood din nila yung actual or yung mga yung mga movies about Romeo and Juliet or kahit clips And so, for social studies, kailangan mo ding, uh, kung ang pinag-aralan ay world history, syempre, kailangan mo magpakita kung nasaan dito yung uh, Philippines, saan, sa ang hemisphere ba matatagpuan ang USA, saan yung mga yung Nile River, mga ganun. Diba? So, kailangan mo ding gumamit ng mga audiovisual materials. So, that is supported curriculum na tumutulong sa teacher para may i-accomplish niya ang thought curriculum. Okay? What else? Laboratory equipment. Siyempre, magdi-discuss ka sa chemistry. Wala ka namang mga chemicals. Paano nila ma-appreciate yun? O sasabihin mo, pag pinaghalong mo si, si sodium chloride and uh, water, ang mangyayari sa sabog yan, mga ganun na. <laughs> diba? Pero mga, mga bata, baka subukan nila sa sabog naman talaga. Like for example, yung <clears throat> vinegar, I mean, yung uh, Pepsi and Mentos. Yan. Hindi naman siya mag-explode na mag-explode, pero yung reaction niya kasi aangat, parang ganun. Parang, uh, parang volcano na mag-erupt when you combine uh, Mentos and Pepsi, what else? Vinegar and soda, baking soda. 
So, yun yung mga supported curriculum. Next is assessed curriculum. So, siyempre, nakapagturo ka na with materials, anong susunod? So, from the word assessed, kailangan mo na mag-evaluate. <clears throat> so, this refers to a tested or evaluated curriculum. Like, for example, at the end of uh, every teaching episodes, dapat meron ka series of evaluations. Series of evaluations are being done by the teachers to determine the extent of teaching or to tell if the students are progressing. Kailangan mo din yon, like uh, at the end of your lesson, sabihin mo, okay, uh, can you make a recap of our lesson today? Or, okay, uh, pero sasabihin mo na before, at the end of the lesson, I will give you 10 point quiz. Yeah, that's an example of assessment or evaluation. So, that is an assess curriculum. Pwedeng uh, yung sa... Kasi ang next topic natin is assessment of learning. Ano ba yung assessment? Ay yung mga paper and pencil. Pencil and paper test. What else? Aside from yung mga standardized test. Projects also. So, that is an assessed curriculum. And then, six is the learned curriculum. Uh, from the word learn. So, this refers the, to the learning outcomes achieved by students. So, what, what do we mean by learning outcomes? So, learning outcomes are indicated by the results of the test, quizzes, Siyempre, nagpa-test ka na, di ba? Nag-assess curriculum ka. Changes in behavior. May natutunan ba sila sa values, attitudes, which can either be cognitive, affective, and psychomotor. Cognitive, di ba yan sa mental capacity, mental ability, intellectual ability. Affective, something about feelings or emotions, values, attitude. And then psychomotor skills, yung mga kinesthetic skills, yung mga bodily kinesthetic. Let's say, let's say kung natuturo ka ng mape, uh, tawag doon, naging active ba sila, gumaling ba sila sa pagsasayaw, sa pagkanta, and so on. So, in in uh, checking the achievement, the progress of your students, their learning outcomes, these are what we call as learned curriculum learned curriculum. So, complete package siya. And then, the last one is hidden curriculum. So, ano naman tong hidden curriculum? From the word hidden, this is the unintended curriculum which is not deliberately planned but may modify behavior or influence learning outcomes. Minsan yung mga wala sa, sa school. So, there are lots of hidden curricula that transpire in the schools. Like, for example, ano kayong mga example na, na nakaka-apekto sa mga sudyante, nakaka-apekto sa pag-aaral nila, nakaka-apekto sa pagkatuto nila. Kasi pagtuturo ka ay eh, from recommended curriculum to, <coughs> to the learned curriculum. Example, peers, peer influence, yung barkada, Diba? Di ba napapansin nyo minsan sa school, uh, meron silang click na sinasabi. Kung sino pa yung matalino, sila yung nagkakasakasama. Yung mga mahilig mag-basketball, sila yung nagbabarkata. Di ba? Mga ganun. What else? School environment. Kung uh, tawag doon, kung well-ventilated ang classroom, syempre mas matuto ang mga bata. Mas aantokin sila <laughs> kasi well-ventilated. As compared naman sa sobrang init, yung nagpapaypay sila. That would affect their learning uh, process pag ganun. What else? Uh, physical condition. Teacher-learner interaction. 
kung hindi nakikipag-participate, kung hindi marunong yung teacher na mag-motivate ng students, what else? Mood of the teachers. ba? Diba? <laughs> Minsan kasi ang mga teachers naman, dinadala nila sa sa school yung kanilang bigat na na pasan from sa bahay, problema sa jowa, <laughs> di ba minsan na pag-iinitan yung mga sudyante. Those are hidden curriculum. And uh, there are a lot of uh, factors that <clears throat> that made up curriculum. Ano pa? Uh, anong senior mo? <clears throat> ano pa ang, ang mga hidden curriculum? Uh, yung family, eh. siyempre. Family factors. Baka may problema din yung family ng bata sa bahay. Kaya naapektuhan yung kanyang pag-aaral din. Kaya hindi rin niya masyadong nakokonsentri sa pag-aaral. Diba? Minsan family problem. Uh, problema sa barkata. Sa relationships. Those are all hidden curriculum na nakaka-apekto rin sa <coughs> teaching learning process. Okay? So, those are the types of curriculum operating in schools. Okay, let's have a recap. <coughs> Recommended, written, taught curriculum, supported curriculum, assessed learn and hidden curriculum. So, curriculum lahat tawag doon. Okay? The process. Now, aside from the types of curriculum operating in schools, we have also uh, levels of curriculum. Level. So, one pinaka, ito yung pinakamalayo sa mga sa teaching learning process, societal level of curriculum. So, from the word society. So, this is the farthest from the learners since uh, this is where the public stakeholders are participating in identifying the goals, the topics to be studied, time to be spent in teaching and learning, materials to aid instructions. So, sino yung mga public stakeholders? Uh, administrators, ano pa, politicians, professional specialists. Okay? Kasi, they are also of great contributory sa paggawa ng curriculum. Yung mga sinasabi natin kanina na curriculum developers. So, sila yung nag-introduce ng bagong curriculum. So, syempre, malayo sa mga bata. Kaya, the level is on the society, societal level. Okay? Next is institutional. So, institutional doon na mismo sa school. So, refers to the curriculum derived from the societal level. So, nag-decide na sila, DepEd, and introduce sa school. So, napunta na doon with modification by local educators or lay people. So, ano ang mga uh, institutional level? Yun na yung mga philosophies of education, lesson plan, teaching guides na gagamitin. Kasi institutional level na siya eh. So, kumbaga, ay handover na siya sa school. So, sabihin na ng mga, ng, let's say, curriculum developers, o oh, eto yung guide bibigay na sa school. So, anong susunod? Siyempre, pag naibigay na sa school, we have instructional level na. Instruction. So, instruction means paano na ngayon gagamitin ng teacher ang curriculum na yun. So, instructional level siya. Okay? So, develop in societal level, minodify ng institutional level, and then, eto naman sa teacher na ang instructional level. Anong gagawin ng teacher? Siyempre, mag-iisip si teacher ng best strategy, pedagogy, kung paano niya i-implement, paano niya i-deliver. So, dito sa, sa UAE, sa international schools, provided, some schools provided na yung kanilang guide, yung lesson plan. 
So, ang ibig sabihin, bibigay na. O, oh, itong tuturo mo ngayong week na to. So, ang gagawin na lang ng teacher is to think of a strategy, instruction, kung paano niya i-deliver yung lesson, yung topic. So, kanya-kanyang pagalingan yan, kanya-kanyang paandar. How? Siyempre, kailangan mo mag-isip ng paandar mo, ng strategy mo, kung saan mas madaling mag-grasp ng masudyante mo yung tuturo mo sa araw na yun. So, instruction, instructional level of curriculum. And then, the last one is experiential level of the curriculum. So, this, from the word experience, that this is the curriculum perceived and experienced by the students. Okay, so, my instruction na from the teacher. So, the, the perceived and experienced by the learners, yun yung experiential level of the curriculum. Okay? So, now you know na ayun pala ay mga curriculum. Lahat pala ng yun, ng mga factors are part of the curriculum. Okay? So, that's the nature of curriculum. Definition of curriculum. Types of curriculum. Okay? Any questions? If none, let's proceed. Now, let's go back to the foundations of curriculum. <clears throat> so, in recall natin, although we have discussed already this, yung mga psychological foundations, if you recall, uh, what you call this, in, in child and adolescent development, in facilitating learning, dyan, nandyan, dyan nakapaloob yung mga iba't ibang uh, theories especially on psychological foundations. So, aside from psychological foundation of education, syempre, pag education, merong curriculum. So, foundation of curriculum. Ganon din. So, let's let's uh, recall. Because, you know, uh, psychology or psychological foundation provides a basis for the teaching and learning process. Psychology is a unifying element of the learning process. It forms the basis for methods, materials, activities for learning, and subsequently serve as basis for many curriculum decisions. So how curriculum should be organized to enhance learning? To, to get the optimum level of, let's say, <clears throat> students' participation, in in the learning or the teaching learning process so let's go over the different psychological foundations it is divided into three yung mga most popular theories unahin natin yung sa behaviorism and the curriculum yung sa behavior so, curriculum should be organized so students experience, experience success in mastering the subject matter. What else? Highly prescriptive and <clears throat> diagnostic in approach. And it relies on step-by-step -step procedure and structured methods of learning. <clears throat> so, ano yung mga behavioral uh, theories? Like kay Edward... Thorndike. Ano na ulit kay Edward Thorndike? <clears throat> if you can recall, siya ay sa connectionism, connectionism theory. Yung law of readiness. Kung hindi ready ang bata, huwag bilitin, mag-aral. Law of effect, uh, use and disuse, misuse, mga ganun. So, connectionism. What else? Si Ivan Pavlov. Ano na ulit ang ginawa ni Ivan Pavlo? Yung classical conditioning. Yung, let's say, yung experiment niya about the rats. Classical conditioning. Yung sa dogs din. Ito yung voluntary. May voluntary and involuntary response. 
si Skinner, siya naman yung operant conditioning. Yung meron doon yung mga uh, na nakaka-apekto sa behavior ng mga learners. Like, for example, rewards, punishment. Kung magbibigay ka ng rewards, number na mag-aaral ang bata. Kung hindi ginawa yung yung task, papanish mo siya. That, that would help in in uh, changing their behavior with regards to learning. Who else? Uh, Jerome Bruner. And then, Albert Bandura. Very popular si Albert Bandura. Siya ay sa observation theory or sa modeling. Yung mga bata, nagiging idol nila ang mga teacher. Ginagaya nila ang teacher nila. Kasi teacher serves to be models. So sabi ni Albert Bandura, very uh, important ang ang modeling. Kasi doon natututo ang bata. Ginagaya niya. Especially yung mga good behavior. Kaya meron silang mga idol, si mga sudyante. Kasi iyon yung kumbaga sinusundan nila pa. So that is an observation theory. Tapos sino naman si Robert Cagney? Siya naman sa may hierarchy hierarchy of learning. Hierarchical learning yung let's say uh, may iba't ibang skills, may motor skills, attitudes, intellectual skills, information skills, ayun. So, all those theories are under behaviorism ay connected sa curriculum. Naging basehan yun sa paggawa ng curriculum. Okay, so, behaviorism and uh, curriculum. What else? Kasi, uh, aside from task and reinforcement para sa, let's say, sa desired behavior ng, ng mga learners, to them, ito, itong mga behaviorists na ito, uh, learning should be organized. Kaya yung first na yun, curriculum should be organized. In order that students can experience success in the process of mastering the subject matter. Para maging Thank mas you so much for watching. Yung, Before yung leaving, please do click the like, teaching and subscribe, and, and get notified buttons. So, ang method is step-by-step -step manner. So, yan yung connection ng mga behaviorism theories to curriculum. Next is cognitive. Cognition. Uh, what, ano pa ya? Uh, intellectual capacity. Mental domains. And the curriculum. Paano naman nakatulong yung mga theories na ito sa paggawa ng curriculum? So, the cognitive approach constitutes a logical method for organizing and interpreting learning. And the approach is rooted in the tradition of subject matter. So, if, if, let's say for example, how do our learners store information? Paano sila mag-grasp mag and mag-store ng information? How do they retrieve data and generate conclusion? So, syempre, kailangan nila mag-isip. So, these are the basic, some of the basic questions asked by cognitive psychologists. So, sino ang very familiar sa cognitive? Si Jan Piaget. Cognitive developmental stage. Then, isang sensory motor, if you remember. What else? Na may stages ang mga bata sa pagkakatuto nila. Mula pagka, siyempre, pag pinanganak, naging, uh, what they call this, infant. Yung learning process nila in terms of cognitive. According to Jan Piaget, there are stages of cognitive development. So, ito yung mga nagiging basis in constructing a curriculum. Who else? Si John Dewey. 
si John Dewey, very popular siya sa learning by doing. Yun yung theory niya na mas natututo ang mga bata kung ginagawa nila in actual. Hindi lang yung puro tayo uh, theories. Hindi lang puro discussion. Kailangan nila ding may experience. So, learning by doing. Same is true with Jerome Brunner. Si Jerome Brunner naman ay saan siya familiar? Discovery learning. Kasi alam niyo mga bata, they are ex, uh, tawag doon, exploratory sila. nag explore sila lagi. Gusto nila lagi na nag, nakikita kung anong uh, tawag doon. Anong mangyayari? Anong result? So, ja- Jerome Brunner postulated the discovery learning. Discovery learning. Si Vygotsky naman ay sa scaffolding. Ano yung scaffold na sinasabi? Siyempre, ang mga bata natututo sila sa society, sa environment, sa community. So, with the help of significant others. Parang scaffold, di ba? Scaffold, kailangan mong tumuntong ng tumuntong para maabot mo yung goal mo. Kung baga, tuntungan. Yung scaffolding, if you're familiar with that. Di ba? So, for example, si- sequence din yun dapat. Like, ang maliit na bata, before natatakbo siya, kailangan muna niya mag-crawl and mag-walk. So, with the help of, let's say, nanay, maid, kapatid, and others, na, natututo siyang tumakbo. So, that's an example of a scaffolding. What else? Bago siya makapagsulat ng essay, syempre, kailangan muna niyang matutong maghawak ng pencil, kailangan muna niyang matuto ng uh, cursive, sulat ng letters, matuto ng word, uh, syllables, words, then sentences then paragraph after paragraph essay na siya that's scaffolding okay and Howard uh, that's Gardner, hindi Gardner Howard Gardner sino si Howard Gardner? o oh, alam, alam nyo yan siya sa multiple intelligences na each of your learner may kanya-kanyang intelligence yan. Hindi porke yung isang bata ay hindi achiever, hindi siya magaling sa academics. Bobo na siya. Malay mo siya palang pinakamagaling mag-drawing. Siya palang pinakamagaling kumanta. So sumayaw. What else? In the future, siya pala ay magiging mayor. Kasi magaling siya sa interpersonal skills. Diba? So each learner, meron, ta- meron tayong mga uh, we need to understand about multiple intelligences. Hindi lang iisa. Meron pa yan. Pero may isang dominant, syempre. So, it's either dalawa, tatlo, kahit walong. Meron din yung bata kung lahat meron siyang te- lahat ng eight intelligences, kompleto siya. Like, matalino na siya sa math, magaling pa siya sa sayaw, basketballista pa siya, ano pa, Magaling pa siyang mag-drawing. So, nandun na lahat. So, ibig sabihin, multiple ang kanyang intelligence. But, of course, we need to discover from our students yung kanilang intelligence. Kaya, we need to vary our strategies, our assessment. Kailangan mo din i-discover para hindi naman yung bata na, nasa sulok na lang siya from the start of the school year hanggang end of the school year you need to discover kung anong kagalingan niya kasi may mga activities naman tayo every month o baka mamaya magaling pala siyang mag-drawing so ang, ang intelligence niya is sa visual magaling pala siya sa sa Rubik's Cube ba diba? na hindi mo lang nati-discover So, that is cognitive or cognition as part of curriculum, as a factor in creating a good curriculum. Okay? 
Next, phenomenology and curriculum. When you say phenomenology, this is a philosophy of experience. Phenomenon, yung let's say, pag may nangyari, ah, pag may bago, mga ganon, latest, phenomenal, parang ganon. So, this is uh, likened to humanism, humanistic psychologies, uh, which are concerned with how learners can develop their human potential. Paano nila madidiscover ang sarili ng potential? How can they develop those potentials also? Okay? So, phenomenologists view the individual in relation to the field of which he or she operates. Para sa multiple intelligences. That the raw data of personal experiences are vital to understanding learning. Dito sa UAE, parang meron, meron tayong cut for test na pinapa-exam sa mga bata, maliit na bata, para malaman mo yung kanilang strengths and weaknesses. Para ma-strengthen ma mo yung strength nila, tapos ma-develop mo yung kanilang weakness. So, those raw data of personal experiences, these are vital to understanding learning. So, kasama lahat yan sa paggawa ng curriculum. So, for example, si, si Abraham Maslow. O, oh, sino naman si Maslow? Si Maslow ay sa hierarchy of needs. Yung mga kailangan, dapat naka-hierarchy yan. Yung parang uh, pyramid. Kung ano yung pinakababa, ano yung pinakataas. Yung pinaka-peak, yung pinakadulo, yun yung uh, main goal niya. According to Abraham Maslow, on the hierarchy of needs, yun yung self-actualization, yun yung pinakadulo. So, nasa baba yung mga uh, basic needs, what else, yung mga psychological needs niya, lahat, bago yung self-actualization. Yung nakukuha na niya lahat, I mean, yung tagumpay na siya. This is for hierarchy of needs. Meron din dapat, dapat mong malaman kung mas importante ba ang needs or wants, mas importante ba ang desire mo kaysa sa kakainin mo, mga ganon. So, according to him, meron tayong hierarchy of needs. Like, physiological safety. Yun. What else? Love and belongingness needs. Steam needs. And then the last one is self-actualization. Nasa gitna lang yung love and belonging. Kasi love for, of the family, friends, relationship, mga ganun. Okay? Si Carl Rogers naman, uh, theory of personality. Sa theory of personality naman siya. And this personality, very important ito sa paggawa din ng curriculum. And then kay Lewis Rath, siya naman ay sa, parang din sa kay Abraham Maslow, needs theory naman siya. Sa needs theory, empowerment theory, yung mga yon. So, those theories, naging basehan lahat yon sa paggawa ng curriculum, sa pag-change ng curriculum, sa pag-evaluate, pag-monitor, pag-implement ng curriculum. Okay? So, Those are the psychological foundation of curriculum. Kung paano na form yung curriculum. So may mga basis din tayo uh, <coughs> theories. Kasi hindi lang man basta-basta gagawa ka ng curriculum. Okay, so psychological after that philosophical foundation. Ayan, babalik na naman tayo sa philosophical foundation. Philosophies. Philosophy is an important foundation of curriculum because it advocates or reflects uh, in a particular school and its official 
as per goals and aims and content as well as the organization of its curriculum. Siyempre, na, nandun din eh. If you, let's say for example, <coughs> mag, bakit tayo nagtuturo ng reading, writing, and arithmetic? Eh siyempre dahil sa essentialist philosophy. Mga ah, ganun. Bakit natin ini-insist ang uh, values, love for God, love for truth, o dahil sa idealism philosophy. So, for example, traditional versus progressive. Okay, start mo natin dito sa tra- <clears throat> So, focus one is intellectual development. Yung noon, certain subjects train the mind. So, they are using liberal arts, science, just to build intellectual power. Pero ngayon, syempre, dinagdagan na kailangan na ng practical arts para maging holistic. Okay? Before, <clears throat> they used ready-made experiences by written and spoken words, yung mga naka-publish na. But now, kailangan na rin mag-problem solving ang mga bata. Mag-acting. Hindi na lang sila nagbe-base sa, sa mga ready-made na uh, literary works. Before, education is conceived as instruction. <clears throat> Dati, Kasi kaya papasok lang sila sa school para maka, yun, maka-grasp ng knowledge. But now, according to progressivist, education is conceived as creative self-learning para ma-improve mo din yung sarili mo. Hindi lang yung grasp ka ng grasp ng knowledge. So, creatively, what else? Critically, kailang, na na-improve ang sarili. Okay? So, ang focus niyan is intellectual development. Now, what else? Yung functioning citizen naman. So, teaching makes for good, I mean, development makes for good citizenship. Siyempre, tinuturuan noon para maging good citizens. Yan yung mga focus nila noon. So, Pero ngayon, hindi na lang siya maging good citizen, kundi good citizen with good morals and useful skills. Noon, knowledge and discipline prepare pupils to exercise freedom. Kagaya nung sila Jose Rizal, nag-aral siya kasi gusto niya ma-exercise ang freedom niya against yung sa sa atin ng colonizers. Pero ngayon, hindi na. In terms of functioning citizen, direct experience in a democratic living, democratic learning. Pwede ka nang mamili, nang aaralin mo, pwede ka nang mag-experience directly kasi democratic na siya. Okay? What else? Learners as individuals in our society. So that day, we follow traditional modes of learning with prepared curriculum. Pero ngayon, we can have our own learning modes within a flexible curriculum. Meron na tayong uh, modules. Meron na tayong uh, alternative learning system. Kasi dati yung prepared lang. What else? Homogeneous grouping and special grouping. Practice kasi noon yung homogeneous. Yung section A, section B. What else? Yung section na... Pag section, let's say sa Manila, let's say kung may 32 sections. Paano kung nasa section 32 ka? Diba? So, ikaw na yung walang-wala. That was before. Pero progressive, 
segregation of learner as undemocratic. And then, before educated regular education or educated rigorously to accept roles in society. Ngayon, individuality na. Non-conformity. Okay, learners as actual or potential workers. Traditionally, introduce ang curriculum as vocational education, then followed by liberal arts. Pero ngayon, hindi na. Vocational, hand-in-hand -hand with liberal education. Pwede nang maghalo. Kasi noon, hindi. Kailangan mo munang mag-vocational, then mag-liberal arts. So, that is a, a view of education from traditional to progressive. What else? Characteristics of curriculum before. Fixed and absolute. Subject matter as important and thought for future use. Kasi kahit nung tayo, sabi nila, kailangan mo mag-aral para sa kinabukasan mo. Di ba? Pero ngayon, hindi na ganoon dapat. Because curriculum now is relative. And then, subject matter is as important for immediate use. Kakailanganin mo na kaagad. Hindi mo mag-aaral ka para sa future. Kasi ngayon, uh, minsan, uh, survival of the fetus na eh. In order to survive in a society, kailangan mo nang i-apply ka agad yung natututunan mo. Kaya meron tayong social uh, reconstructionism to be responsible members of the society for a social order, to be of contributory to social order. Okay? So, yun yung mga different views of education. We, we compared traditional and progressive education. When we say progressive, yung ngayon. <coughs> okay? Now, let's go over the different philosophical foundation, kung anong curriculum nila noon. Uh, you can also use this as clues. Nilagay ko na lang para mas, ano, ma-master ma, ma ninyo. So, idealism, ang curriculum nila is religious and values-oriented. What else? Uh, it upholds goodness and truth. Pag unchanging truth, universal truth, religious and values-oriented, idealism yon. Okay? Ano naman ang realism? Ang realism, theories and principles before application. It is also concerned with world of ideas and things within established subject matter. Pag realism kasi, di ba, gagamitan mo ng senses. So, it includes only the essentials. And it emphasizes reality of things. Kaya nga realism siya. Yung mga realities sa buhay na kailangan mong i-explore. So, that is the curriculum for the realism philosophy. Punong-puno ng ideas ang mundo. So, you need to discover, you need to explore, you need to study the theories and principles, and then apply. That is being realist. Next, pragmatism. <coughs> Child-centered ang pragmatism or pragmatic. What else? Subject matter for stimulating exploration and practical action. The emphasis of pragmatism is on how to think rather than what to think. So, how? Kailangan laging may how to think. And then, what else? Yung sa solutions. Emphasis on development of insights, understanding, and skills acquired in creative, reflective, critical thinking. Subject matter are being thought naturally. So, pag pragmatic ang idea mo, syempre, doon ka na sa mga proven. Yung mga proven solutions. Yung mga successful uh, successful solutions. Okay? Pragmatic. Existentialism. <clears throat> Ito yung free, di ba? Ang, ang 
clue nyo dito lagi is free, freely, free choosing individual ang mga bata. So, the main concern is to free the child to do his own thing. Kasi, let the child discover kung anong purpose niya dito sa mundo. Existence uh, precedes essence. Freeze learners to choose what to learn and believe. So, walang course guides and content outlines. Uh, learners sets own identities and standard. Kasi sila mismo ang magdi-discover ng kanilang interest, ng kanilang, uh, what you call this, directions, ambitions. That is existentialism. Next is perennialism. Fix. Because the ends of education are absolute and universal. Kumbaga, uh, perennial, lagi yan, nakafix na. Kumbaga. Like, uh, for example, uh, the teachers are teaching the subject in customary, separate form rather than combined. So, they eliminate extras and frills, like in music. Walang extra. Nakafix na kasi eh. ba? Diba? Kung anong meron sa, sa, sa napag-aaralan, doon yun lang. Kung ano yung law, yun lang. Kumbaga. Kasi para sa kanila, mga perennialist, the, the end of education are absolute and universal. Kumbaga, isa naman ang patutunguhan natin eh. Eto. So, dito tayo susunod etong pag-aaralan natin. So, wala nang ibang uh, <clears throat> tinakagaya ng pragmatic na pag hindi nag-work, hindi totoo. ba? Diba? So, sila, experiment ng experiment to find for a better solution. So, hindi naka-fix. Okay? Yan yung sa perennialism. And then, essentialism, <clears throat> essential skills, Yung 3 R's, reading, writing, arithmetic. Kaya tinawag lang na 3 R's. So, reading, writing, arithmetic. Yun na ang pronunciation niya. Kasi 3 R's siya. What else? English, science, history, math, and foreign language. These are also essentials. Especially sa college. And to educate the competent person. Kasi syempre, pag if you are... Uh, <coughs> blessed with with essential skills the fundamental skills to survive life then you can survive depende kung saan kang society di ba so kailangan mo talaga yung mga essentials yung mga hindi na kailangan wag mo nang kukunin parang ganun sa essentialism kasi nakadepende yan kung saan ka nakatira ano ang environment mo Diba? Halimbawa, nasa bundok, bulubundukin kayo. Eh, syempre, yung mga kailangan mo bang pag-aralan pa? Yung mga uh, smart board, kung ni kuryente, wala nga doon. Diba? So, just the essentials. So, anong, anong best doon? Yung mga practical lessons. Turan mo sila ng mga uh, livelihood programs na kailangan nila sa pang-araw-araw na pamumukay. So, the essentials. Progressivism, syempre, individuality of the students. So, it is based on student interest. Nakabase sa interest ng mga bata. Interdisciplinary subject matter, activities, and project. Kumbaga, hindi lang, hindi siya iisa dapat depending on the needs, interests, the intelligences, the demands of your learners. Kaya, it caters to the individuality of the child. And then the last, reconstructionism or social reconstructionism. So, the curriculum is a means in remaking society and rebuilding culture. So, diba, lagi natin pag-reconstructionism, 
to construct a new, to rebuild, remake a social order. So we are teaching the students to be socially involved, to to master or to be aware, to teach them awareness, consciousness about social issues. So curriculum should be a catalyst of change. So dapat lahat ng natututunan nila makakatulong yan sa pag-solve, sa pagbabago ng lipunan, ano pa, for the improvement of the society. Para hindi lang sila maging ang tawag doon, uh, nag-aral nga siya <clears throat> ng pagkarami-raming kurso, hindi naman siya napapakinabangan sa community. Diba? So, hindi siya, hindi yun reconstructionism. Ayaw niyang mag-share. Ayaw niyang mag-share ng kanyang uh, qualifications, ng kanyang skills. Diba usually, pag sa community, pag may problem na, aside from the barangay officials, siyempre, kailangan mong kunin yung mga uh, tawag doon, uh, anong say ng mga professionals na nandun sa community. Kasi sila nakapag-aral. So, siyempre, you need to, to, to ask their opinions kung ano naman sasabi nila sa problema sa barangay and so on. So, contract analysis of issues in the community. So, yan. Merequal ulit natin yung mga philosophies. Okay? Para mas ano kayo. So, essentialism, progressivism, perennialism, existentialism, pragmatic, idealist, and realist. Kasi later on, you will encounter these terms often. Lagi nyo itong mababasa doon. Kasi may mga examples, then a situations in which ibibase niyan sa theory. Kasi hindi naman direct sasabihin doon. May situation, then you need to find the basics. Kung saan siya naka-root. Anong philosophy siya nakapag uh, na-based, kumbaga. So, we have physiological foundation, philosophical foundation of Kasi education, di ba sabi ko kanina, foundation of education, syempre, wala namang education kung walang curriculum. Kaya, inulit natin, philosophical foundation of curriculum. And now, letter C, sociological or cultural foundation of curriculum. Ito naman yung sa society, sociology, and culture. Curriculum discussion should consider the social setting, especially the relationship between the schools and society, and its influence on curriculum decision. Ayun yung nasabi ko kanina. Like, halimbawa, na, na, <clears throat> na, assign ka, na destino ka sa bundok, sa bulubunduking lugar. So, <clears throat> you need to consider the relationship of the community with the school para malaman mo bakit ah, bakit hanggang dito lang ang tinuturo nyo bakit eto lang mga ganon diba? na halimbawa galing ka sa, pre, sa prestigious area so introduce ka ng introduce ng mga magagaling na strategy eto ang ganda-ganda to galing ito sa Amerika na strategy eh kung hindi naman applicable doon diba? especially kung wala kang materials walang basic yung mga learner mo doon about the strategy. So, you need to consider that in identifying, in constructing, in uh, formulating curriculum to teach to your children. So, kailangan din ang sociocultural foundation. Curriculum decision takes place in a complex social setting through the demands that are imposed by society and that filter down to schools. Social astuteness is essential for curricular curriculum planners and developers today. Kaya yung mga nagmamasters, sila dito, sila Sir, sila Sir Gerald, Sir Jeffrey, si Sir Joel, ang kinukuha kasi nila is MAED, ELM, Educational Leadership and Management. So sila yung magiging school leaders. 
Dr. Cesar Jomar, ang kinukuha niya is Master of Arts in Curriculum Development, Design, and Supervision. So, ito yung magiging trabaho niya in the future. Magdi-design ng curriculum, magdi-develop ng curriculum. Kasi, ito kasi yung in-demand na uh, yung leadership management sa curriculum, sila yung in-demand kaya sila yung ino-offer. In-demand ngayon, tsaka sa future. Why? Kasi uh, constant, I mean, nag-change lagi ang ang educational uh, system. Nag-change ang society. So, nag-change ang ating learners. So, syempre, kailangan natin ng curriculum designer, curriculum developer, na mag study kung anong nababagay na curriculum ang kailangang ma-implement sa kind of learners that we have today. Okay? So, meron tayong Master of Arts in Curriculum Design, Development, and Supervision. Sinusupervise din niya. So, that is Sociocultural Foundation. Because, now, what is the influence of society and culture to curriculum? It inhibits change through traditions. It rates and directs change corresponds to societal changes and apply pressure through societal demands. Yun na nga, yun. Let's say, in the near future, ang mga bata na ay puro automation ang generation nila. <clears throat> When we say automation, puro robotics na. Baka darating ang panahon na ganun na. Eh ngayon pa lang kasi yung Gen Z, generation, sila yung mga batang pinanganap from 2010 onwards. Ibig sabihin, pinanganak sila na ang kakambal nila ay gadget. Sila yung mga pinanganak na, na kumbaga, ang yaya nila ay gadget. Na, Naalatan nyo ang mga bata ngayon, kahit, kahit two months pa lang, three months pa lang, may hawak ng cellphone, may hawak ng gadget. Kasi, Kapag panoorin mo lang siya ng Coco Melo, titigil na kagad. Diba? Parang yun yung kanilang maid o yaya. <clears throat> yun yung Gen Z generation. Kasi nung pinagbubuntis pa lang sila, nakaka-grasp na sila ng, ano, ng ideas from the outside world about, let's say, especially kung ang nanay ay mag-gadget din. Nat- natututo na din sila. Kaya sila yung mga... Uh, Gen Z or Alpha Generation na kakambal nila ang gadgets. Kaya dapat ngayon, ideally, ang mga bata dapat hindi na uh, tawag doon, hindi na dinideprive sa mga gadgets. Kasi the more na magiging ano sila, hindi sila in, kumbaga. Kaya normal lang na magka-gadget ang mga, basta, syempre, may, may, lag, may limitations lagi kailangan pa rin ng supervision. Kasi, open kasi ang YouTube, open ang iba't ibang sites. <clears throat> Pero, yun yung generation kasi nila. So, ano ang role ng curriculum? We need to prepare curriculum na suited sa kanilang generation. Kaya, ang mga bata ngayon, hindi na nakikinig masyado. Ang ang attention span na lang nila sa classroom ay hanggang ano na lang hanggang 2 hours and the rest ana nilang makinig kaya give them more activities gamifications kasi yun ano sila eh in hyperactive sila they want interactive uh, strategies gustong gusto nila kaya di ba lagi ko sinasabi ang ang pagtuturo ngayon ngayong generation na to ay student centered 80% student activity only 20% for the teachers. Kasi gusto nila lagi yung gumagalaw kasi eh, doon sila best na natututo. Now, paano kaya in the future kung puro ano na lang, uh, instruction na lang sa mga ro- robotics, robotics na lang lahat, pindot-pindot na lang. So, kailangan din natin baguhin ang curriculum. That is related to advancement of technology kung sa period of automation na. Kasi ngayon, let's say sa mga restaurants, kausapin mo lang yung, ro- yung robot, mag-order ka sa kanya, bibigay na sa'yo. Diba? 
paano kung sa school, puro robotics na din. Uh, who knows, in the near future, baka magiging gano. So, we need to upgrade ang curriculum. Siyempre, tayo din as teachers, we need to upgrade ourselves. Okay, so that's the one of the influences of society and culture. Especially kung, let's say, <clears throat> may pangarap kang magturo sa Amerika or sa Japan. Yung mga may high-tech na state-of-the-art facilities. Pangarap mong pumunta doon pero hindi ka naman pala marunong gumamit ng mga pinipindot-pindot sa class ko. Diba? So, you need to learn the society kung saan ka magtuturo, their culture, kung ano ang epekto niya sa education. Parang yung mga cases ng ano dito, mga OFW na, let's say, sa mga household workers. Household service workers. Bakit sila sinasaktan ng kanilang mga amo? Kasi halimbawa, <clears throat> yung taga-bundok, nag-housemate, pumunta ng Dubai, hindi marunong sa, ga- sa mga facilities. sumabog yung gamit sa bahay. Eh, siyempre, sasaktan ka ng apo, di ba? <laughs> Kasi hindi ka naman pala marunong gumamit ng mga, let's say, yung air fryer or yung mga dipindipindot sa sa kusina. Eh, wala kasi ganun sa probinsya, sa Pilipinas. Di ba? So, iba ang na-culture shock siya. So, parang ganun yung learning sa education and society. Kailangan mong matutunan yung pupuntahan mo muna ng society. para makagawa ka din ng plano mo, which is the curriculum. So, what are the societal changes? Siyempre, science and technology. Technology especially. Period na ngayon ng multimedia arts. Yung mga, <clears throat> what, yung mga blockchain. I don't know if you have idea sa mga ganun. Artificial intelligence. Uh, ano pa ba? Uh, Bitcoin. data analytics, yun yung mga magiging trend in the future. Okay? Improve communication. Change family roles. Population explosion. Hmm. Pag, pag populated na masyado yung area nyo, that would give a societal issue. Social mobility. Value crisis. Subject matter related to events, facilities, active participation, stakeholders, accountability. So these are the societal changes that affects the implementation or the formulation and implementation of curriculum. Okay, so we have psychological, we have philosophical, sociocultural, now, last, we have historical foundations. Balikan ulit natin yung history. <clears throat> okay? Because historical foundation of curriculum reflects the educational focus prevalent during a particular period or event in Philippine history. Balikan lang natin yung four. Because, you know, the historical development shows different changes in purpose, principles, and content of the curriculum. Like, for example, pre-Hispanic era, Spanish era, ano pa, American, and Japanese. After that kasi, nag-commonwealth na tayo, then nag-continue na tayo sa ating sariling uh, educational system. So, let's go over with that four. Kasi the different changes in those four historical eras are influenced by the educational philosophy, psychology, ano pa, pedagogy that we are using right now. Because, you know, this implies that curriculum is ever-changing. We need to put in knowledge and content from many 
fields of discipline. Nag-change yan. Kaya sinasabi ko, in the future, iba rin ang curriculum nila. Sa mga uh, curriculum ng mga learners. Uh, I mean, future, baka bukas o makalawa or next year or after five years, nagkakaroon lagi ng drastic change. Hindi natin nakahalata. Okay? Let's start with the pre-Hispanic era. O, oh, diba? <clears throat> Noon, ang goal lang nila is integration of individuals into the tribe, tribo. That is education. Ano ang focus nila? Custom and tradition. Kasi nakatutok lang sila sa ano eh, sa kung anong tradition nila sa community. Oral immersion, yung kausap-usap lang. Course of study, wala. Wala silang ano pa noon, formal school. Hindi pa formal ang kanilang pag-aaral. Kasi community-based. Yung magpapamiting lang yung yung king or yung tatu. There was no educational system. Okay? Magpapamiting lang siya about customs, traditions, para kung anong kabutihan ng tribo, ng community, ganun lang. Before the Spanish era. Now, during the Spanish era, syempre ang goal nila noon is to spread Christianity. Syempre ilang 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 hundreds of years ba naman silang nagstay sa Philippines. So ang focus nila noon is religion. Kaya nag naglipa na ang mga friars, puro pari ang nasa Pilipinas noon. Okay? So anong method nila? Catechism, catechetical instruction. catechetical instruction. Use of corporal punishment. Noon talagang pinapanish ang mga violators. <clears throat> Di ba? Ang daming, daming uh, violations noon during the Spanish era, during the Spaniards. Ang daming pinapatay. Ganyan kaya nakagawa si Rizal na nag ano sila ng propaganda uh, as revenge sa mga practices. Ang ano nila noon, not, ang, ang education noon is not prescribed. Hindi rin centralized. <clears throat> Pinipili lang nila yung mga mag-aaral noon. Yung mga ano lang, yung mga mayayaman. Wala din grade level noon kasi it is church-based. Doon lang sila sa simbahan nag-aaral. And wala pang educational system during the Spanish era. Kaya nga... <clears throat> Uh, pumunta sa abroad si Rizal para mag-aaral eh. ba? Diba? Pero nung mga latter part of the Spanish era, meron na din, syempre. <clears throat> ilang, diba, ilang years sila? 300, more than 300 years? O, oh, diba, haba-haba nun. After the Spaniards, here comes the Americans. Kung ang mga Spanish, they spread Christianity sa mga Americans naman, democracy. Sa kanila natin natutunan ang democracy. Siyempre, ang focus nila is English language and literature. Kaya ang English natin, ang training natin sa English ay Americanized. American system. So, ang method of study nila noon ay English as a medium of instruction and then democratic na siya. Okay. Meron ng freedom. Hindi kagaya nung Spaniards, Spanish era kasi na pili lang yung pwedeng mag-aral. And during this era, prescribed na ang education, uniform na siya at centralized. It is with this era that an educational system, structured and formal educational system, existed. Meron na tayo. When we say formal, meron tayong grade 1, grade 2. Maayos na siya. May elementary, secondary, meron na ring college. Okay? So, yan naman sa American. Next, sumaglit ang mga Japanese. So, nung ang Japanese era, ang spread naman nila is the new Asian order. Kasi ayaw nila ng American eh. Kaya sabi nila, Tayo, magkakasama tayo. We are all Asians. Kaya eto dapat ang gawin. Pero ang prinsipyo naman nila is anti-American. 
anti-British. So, meron na rin tayong educational system noon kasi galing tayo sa, yung, sa mga Americans. Kaya lang, gusto nilang kalimutan natin ang English language. Yun yung order nila noon. So, ang method nila is root memorization. Nagme-memorize lang. And use of threat and punishment. Ipapanish ka pag hindi ka mag-aral. Okay? Pero centralized din naman ang study noon. And it is prescribed. Kaya lang, it is a propaganda education. Repressive. Kung baka ginamit ang ginagamitin tayo against the, the Americans. So, that was education during the Japanese era. So, after the Japanese era, kasi saglit lang naman sila, bumalik na tayo sa Commonwealth. Then, naging Republic na tayo. Umayos na ang education. Then, hanggang dineclare din ang independence, hanggang sarili na natin ang ating kalayaan. And then, tayo na rin ang nag improve sa ating educational system, nilagay na natin sa constitution, yun, doon naman yung sa legal basis na siya. Okay? Na mandatory ang ganito, mag-aral from elementary, high school, ganyan. Maayos na maayos na siya. Okay? So, that is on historical foundations. And then, last, let's go over some of the the various foreign influences of our curriculum. Okay? Kasi kung wala itong mga uh, foreigners na ito, we cannot form, we cannot formulate, we cannot uh, evaluate, we cannot implement our own curriculum. Kasi uh, Philippine education came about from various foreign influences. So, uh, But, of course, of all foreign educational systems, doon tayo sa American educational system. Because the American system has the greatest influence on our educational system. Kaya pagpunta ka ng Middle East, nainibago pa. Kasi dito, they are more on British system, Australian system. Seldom yung may American system. And majority of the scholars or foreigners uh, would place its beginning in 1918 with, uh, kasi nung nag-publish si Franklin Bobbitt ng yung book niya about the curriculum. Dito na na-emphasize, na, na mention yung mga curriculum developers, curriculum theories na contributory sa ating Uh, recent, I mean, ating uh, present curriculum. So, first, we have Franklin Bobbitt. So, si Franklin Bobbitt, sabi niya, curriculum prepares students for adult life. So, according to him, objectives with corresponding activities should be sequenced. And this can only be done if instructional activities and tasks are classified. Oh. So, We based also from Franklin Bobbitt. So as early as 18, ano siya, 1918, kasi nung pinablish na yung the curriculum na book niya. Okay? Aside from Franklin Bobbitt, si Were Charters or Were Charters, sabi naman niya, curriculum is a science. So it gives emphasis on student needs. So, what does it mean? In, in, in preparing a curriculum, kailangan, we need to consider the student needs. Like, yung listing of objectives mo dapat should match with the corresponding activities. Which is tama. Kung gagawa ka ng lesson plan, dapat matching yung, yung ano mo, mga activities na papagawa mo sa mga bata as well as the strategy. So, depende kung anong subject matter mo. So, according to him, uh, subject matter should be related to objectives and then uh, it should be planned by the teachers. That should be planned by the teachers. So, 
according to him, curriculum is a science. William Kilpatrick. Curricula are purposeful activities which are child-centered. So, lahat daw ng papagawa sa school, dapat child-centered. O, oh, yan yung, tingnan nyo, uh, na ano na pala ni William Kilpatrick yan, pero yan yung ginagamit ngayon. 21st century, child-centered ang curriculum. So, the purpose of the curriculum is child development and growth. So, we owe this to uh, William Kilpatrick. So, the curriculum develops social relationships and small group instruction. So, child-centered naman kay Kilpatrick. Pumasok kasi mga pusa. Okay. Fourth one is Harold Drug. Same din sa kanya. Tinuloy lang niya yung kay Kilpatrick. Curriculum should develop the whole child. It is child-centered. So, ano lang siya. Uh, aside from being child-centered, sabi niya, curriculum should produce outcomes. Dapat may result lagi. Pag nagturo ka, uh, ang emphasis mo daw dapat is social studies. And then, we have Hollis Cowell. Curriculum as organized around social functions of teams, organized knowledge, and learners' interests. So, social function naman siya. So, eto na yung application ng social reconstructionism. Sabi niya, ang curriculum dapat ang team ay lagi for social function. Six is Hilda Taba. Si Hilda Taba at saka si Tyler, yung last, ito yung lagi yung mababasa sa exams. Lagi yan. Even for masteral studies. Kasi si Hilda Taba, siya yung sa kanya yung grassroots model of curriculum. Kumbaga, yung makabago like concept develop critical thinking so critical thinking help to lay the foundation of education for diverse student populations kasi pag diverse kailangan mo i-consider daw yung diverse student populations mo so you need to apply the grassroots model by Hilda Taba okay and last we have Ralph Tyler He is one of the hallmarks of curriculum. Pinakatanyag sa curriculum yan, si Ralph Tyler. He believes that curriculum is a science and extension of school philosophy. It is based on students' needs and interests. So kahit uh, tinuloy pa din niya yung mga idea ng mga, uh, mga nauna na foreign influences, pero siya yung nakagawa kasi ng mas organized, mas comprehensive. And according to him, curriculum is always related to instruction. Subject matter is organized in terms of knowledge, skills, and values. So, complete package na siya. Hindi lang knowledge, hindi lang skills, meron na dapat values na matutunan sa curriculum. Kaya, ang mga lesson plan natin, kompleto siya. May affective, yun yung values. Skills, yun yung psychomotor. Cognitive, yun yung knowledge. Sa paggawa ng lesson plan. Kung nakakita na kayo ng lesson plan na, na old, nakalagay doon. At the end of the lesson, the student shall have, yan, 
the student should be able to define mathematics, what else? Solve problems in fraction, and C, appreciate the concept of fraction. So, kumpleto yun. Meron siyang cognitive, na-define niya ang fraction. Meron siyang psychomotor, makakapag-solve na siya ng fraction. And then, ma-appreciate niya ang fraction in real life. So, ganun yun. Kailangan, after the lesson, ang outcome, nagawa lahat. Okay? Na-define na ng bata ang fraction. Nakakapag-solve na siya ng fraction. At nakaka-appreciate na siya ng application ng fraction in real life. Life. So that is Ralph Tyler. The curriculum aims to educate generalists and not specialists. General siya. Complete package kung baga. So any questions? Any any uh, addition, any... So, I hope that's the first part of the, our curriculum development topic. We still have more about curriculum development and we will separate also the K-12 to curriculum para malaman nyo din. Okay po? So, kung wala nang questions, I will just post this in the classroom and then later on na tayo mag-assessment, ano, mag mag-assess curriculum, di ba? So, tapos na tayo sa, sa thought curriculum. Yung assess curriculum, later on na yun. So, I don't know if you have hidden curriculum pa or like for example, baka gutom na kayo or baka may pupuntahan pa kayo, those are hidden curriculum <laughs> na, na nakaka-apekto sa pag-aaral din. Okay? Like si Ma'am Rosa Bell, syempre, meron siya mga anak to cater. Yeah. Sila, sila po actually. <laughs> They are part of the hidden curriculum. Okay? So, kung yes, ano ang questions... Thank you for attending. Let's call it a night po. Good night. Thank you po. Thank you, sir.